Good morning, everyone. I believe that we're live. Um, I'm just uh, going to have a light morning prayer from my office. Uh, I think that um, we should be fine today not to have a formal morning prayer service. So I just thought that uh, given that today is a bit blah, uh, we've had a lot of blah cloudy days over the past uh, <laughs> few weeks. Uh, it seems like a month of, uh, of cloud and rain, um, but we're, uh, we're glad that uh, things are, um, are green and beautiful and uh, warm, relatively warm, um, and that uh, maybe this Friday um, is going to feel a little bit different for some of us. Uh, maybe you're going to have dread. Uh, maybe you've been waiting for this with uh, great anticipation. Uh, and uh, some will approach um, Friday with great fear and some with great jubilation. Uh, I kind of somewhere in the middle uh, with regards to uh, the province uh, moving in a direction that's uh, more green than it is yellow, orange, or red. So we give thanks to God for this day uh, and for the tasks that we have to, uh, to do this day. And so let us pray. Heavenly Father, the night is past and the day is very much open before us. We have tasks that we have planned for and we have things that we cannot prepare for. Help us, Heavenly Father, in all that we do and all that we say, with the interactions with the people that we meet, that your presence will be with us and you will remind us that we are your children and that we represent you in all who we meet and in all that we do. We pray that this day will be blessed. Blessed are you, sovereign God, creator of all, to be glory and praise forever. You founded the earth in the beginning, and the heavens are the works of your hands. In a fullness of time, you made us in your image, and in these last days, you have spoken to us in your Son, Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh. As we rejoice in the gift of your presence among us, let the light of your love always shine in our hearts. Your Spirit ever renew our lives, and your praises ever be on our lips. Blessed be God, Father and Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Our reading is from James, chapter 2, beginning at the 14th verse. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith, but do not have works? Can faith save you? If a brother or sister is naked and lacks daily food, and one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm, and eat your fill, and yet you do not supply their bodily needs, what is the good of that? So faith by itself, if it has no works, is dead. But someone will say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith without works, and I by my works will show you my faith. You believe that God is one, you do well. Even the demons believe and shudder. Do you want to be shown, you senseless person, that faith without works is barren? Was not our ancestor Abraham justified by works when he offered his son Isaac on the altar? You see that faith was active along with his works. And faith was brought to completion by the works. Thus the scripture was fulfilled that says, Abraham believed God, and it was reckoned to him as righteousness. 
And he was called the friend of God. You see that a person is justified by works and not by faith alone. Likewise, was not Rahab, the prostitute, also justified by works when she welcomed the messenger and sent them out by another road? For just as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is also dead. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My brief reflection this morning, and I'll keep it brief, is that think about Jesus and um, the Samaritan. Um, there was a man beaten, lying on the road, and we know the story, or we should, that the religious leaders who had faith passed by the other side and left the man beaten alone. Jesus shows a Samaritan, somebody who was anathema to a Jewish leader, not part of God's plans in their minds. And yet here Jesus speaks about the Samaritan who cared for and supported in every way and for a for a bit of time until the person was healed provided and they were a Samaritan that was works their faith was shown in their love and see when we think about works we think that we're doing things to please God and that's not why we do it we do it not because works give us brownie points as it were with god it's that we do works to show god's love we're representatives of god and so just like the samaritan saw that there was a person in need and responded we need to respond in works a luther did not like james the gospel or the, the epistle. He didn't like the emphasis on works. He said that we're justified by faith. And Paul, in his letter to the Romans, sets out a very long argument about the fact that we are saved by faith through grace. And I indeed believe that that's true. God has graced us with his presence. It is his blessing that uplifts us. It is his hand that reaches down and grabs us up like the Samaritan did to the person who had been injured. But if we don't reflect that love, as Paul says in Corinthians, we're a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. We're nothing but noise. And we don't want our faith to be noise. And I think in the 21st century, and certainly in the latter part of the 20th century, the way that we've expressed our faith has been very noisy and not shown by the way that we act. Look at the residential schools and the mess that churches have got themselves into by the abuse, mistreatment, the neglect, the contempt for this particular culture, a culture that seemingly there was no attempt to understand or to embrace or to recognize because our faith was more important than anything else. And I'm not saying that we should diminish God's uh, message and the gospel by any means. But the way that we bring it forth is extremely important. And I believe that we've missed the mark time and time again when we don't follow through with works as a reflection of our faith. What we do, we do not to influence God. We do it to thank God. So think about that today. 
how do you show your faith? Now, there's so many people who go around and they'll say, I'm a Christian and I believe this and you should repent of your sins and you should do this and you should do that. And it's not shoulda, woulda. We love unconditionally because God loves us unconditionally. And that's what we show forth with others, or we should. And when we don't, we are a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal, nothing but noise. And this modern world suffers no fools. And we are, we should be on high alert uh, because so many disregard our faith because of our negligence in showing our faith and loving in a way that truly does respond to God's love. So think about how to respond to God's love this day. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, your great mercy and love is shown in all creation in every shape and form. And you show us how much you love us by providing us with a wonderful playground to enjoy, to interact with, to use at our discretion. Help us, Lord, to be keepers of your word by honoring your creation and the people that you have created. Help us to show that faith um, in works, to be both creatures fully of faith, saved by grace, but responding in works because we love you and because you've asked us to love others who are different from ourselves. May we always adhere to the law of your love. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Heavenly Father, we do indeed pray for our world. We pray for all situations of crisis. And we ask your blessing. We pray for our church and for the struggles of our church and for those who continue to remain in various stages of lockdown and restrictions. We pray that we continue to be vigilant to fight anything that brings about premature illness, death. We pray that we will build up instead of putting down. And we pray this for the entire church and for our witness in this world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our local community and all those that we love and see daily, those who we care for and love in Christ, our parish community, our various groups and organizations that we belong to, the people that we see um, at our shops. Bless them as you've blessed us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are sick, remembering family members and friends, neighbors, and for ourselves. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray as our Savior Christ has taught us with boldness and with love. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
God bless you this day. Have a wonderful day. Uh, enjoy it. And uh, I hope that maybe you've had some food for thought. Uh, I'll see you again on Thursday. Take care. Bye-bye.